My name is Greg Leffler, uh, as you just heard. Uh, I do work for a company that wants me to put this boring slide up. Please read it. I don't intend to make looking statements, um, but I have to tell you to read it, so please read it. Great, thanks. All right. Uh, <laughs> so currently, my title is Observability Practitioner. Um, <laughs> let's try this. All right. So currently, my title is Observability Practitioner at Splunk. Uh, what that means is I basically come to people like you all the time. Uh, I try to convince everyone that you need observability. Uh, Splunk, as you may be aware, is an enterprise fully buzzword compliant logging platform that also now has observability capabilities. So uh, I'm here to talk to you about observability, what that is, what that does, uh, why I'm here. I've worked in this industry for a while now. Uh, I started off as a systems administrator at eBay uh, and then was an SRE at LinkedIn. So the LinkedIn people in the house, hello. Um, I don't know any of them, but you know, still nice. Um, I uh, live in the US, uh, but I'm glad to be here with all of you today to talk to you about some important stuff, uh, including open telemetry and observability. Uh, before we talk about telemetry, we want to talk a little bit about observability. Uh, specifically, you know, what is observability? It's a topic everybody has strong opinions on. I imagine most of you in the room have strong opinions on it. Um, but there's really a couple of different definitions. Uh, and probably the most common one, if you ask, hey, somebody, what's observability? They say, oh, it's metrics, traces, and logs. Um, and if you say that, you're wrong. Uh, it's, that's not what observability is. It's like a cheeseburger isn't meat, cheese, and buns, right? Those are things you need to have a cheeseburger or observability in this case, right? Those aren't the cheeseburger itself. Uh, the official sort of Wikipedia definition you're gonna see is a second one. This comes from a branch of science called control theory about building factories and automating systems and all that stuff uh, from back in the late 20s. It's been around for a while, uh, but the ability to infer the state of a system by examining its output. Uh, and of course, you know, I work at a vendor, spend money, it'd be great. Spend some money on something, it's cool. Uh, but uh, really what we talk about when we're talking about observability is a way to investigate things that are unknown unknowns. They're things that you didn't know could break. Um, and when they do break, you don't know that they're broken necessarily. Uh, and the way that you do this is by instrumenting everything and like literally everything. The goal is to collect as much data as you possibly can and then use some sort of observability system uh, to tell you what you need to pay attention to or to tell you how things are related. So what do you do with observability? Uh, well, you fix stuff, right? You're all serious. That's why you're here. Uh, that's what you do. Uh, and how do you do that? Well, you use the three pillars uh, plus more, but for now we'll say the three pillars to tell you is there a problem, right? Is a metric wrong? Has a metric gone up? Has a metric gone down? Is it changing? Is it not changing, right? You use a metric to tell you something is broken. You use traces in modern, complicated microservice environments where everything talks to everything else to figure out where is the problem. Like, what service is having the issue? Where in my web of things is there a problem? Uh, and then you use logs, of course, to tell you what caused the problem, right? What is actually broken? How can you fix it? What is the thing that is making all of these things unhappy? Um, there are common tools you use to do this, infrastructure monitoring, application performance monitoring, uh, digital experience monitoring, so RUM, synthetic, stuff like that. Um, and you ideally need to do this across multiple environments, uh, on-premise, across multiple cloud providers, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, as you see, you know, redundancy is also important. <laughs> Being able to have redundancy in your operation and your observability tool uh, is also something that's really useful. So before you get observability, you need to get data. And to get data into the system, you use something called telemetry. Uh, this has a negative connotation among the privacy conscious of you. But um, in this context, you know, we're not talking about user data, like actual data. We're talking about data about their transactions. Um, and so to get data into a system, uh, there, back in the old days, there were many ways that we did this. Um, the first sort of approach people took was that every observability monitoring, incident response, whatever platform, uh, had their own special Snowflake instrumentation process. And you had to install an agent, and you had to deal with every single one of your applications, getting it set up to emit data for that platform. Uh, each new tool required you to do work on every single service, which sucks, obviously. Like, that's not something we ever want to say is, oh, just for each, every one of your services until it's done. Um, this instrumentation wasn't compatible across vendors, across products. Um, there's a couple of cases where even among the same vendor, it wasn't compatible across versions, and everybody had to do a bunch of updates. Um, and it really, the biggest problem that this led to was that you could miss context when you're solving problems. Right? If Team X uses application Y and they monitor it with service Z, and then Team A does a totally different monitoring approach, and Team B has a totally different one, like trying to figure out 
where is the problem and fixing it fast is really challenging because everything's sp spread out. It's not in the same place. Uh, what this really is, it's just toil. It's toil, toil, more toil. There's all kinds of toil. And the whole point of these systems is to get rid of that and to make it easier for you to hang up the phone and go back to sleep uh, once you get paged or you know, if none of you, if some of you aren't on call, congratulations. But for those of you that were, you know, um, you you know what it's like to get a call at four in the morning when it's not even your service and you can't figure out what's wrong, right? So the Open Telemetry project was created to try to make this better. Uh, but before Open Telemetry, there were some other things. Uh, first were proprietary agents, right? Vendors would say, install our agent one time, and it's magic. It'll instrument everything. It'll do all the work for you, and that's great until you decide to switch vendors um, or switch products or go beyond what they can handle or something like that. Open Tracing was a project from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which created an API for sending data to an observability system. Um, it was necessary. Uh, it was something that really was a way to sort of define a standard way to get telemetry data into a system. Um, but there wasn't a way to, uh, in an industry standard, you know, vendor agnostic way, to instrument your code. So Google came up with Open Census to do that. Now, open tracing and open census do a lot of similar things. Um, and CNCF and Google agreed, and so now we have open telemetry. So what is open telemetry? Well, open telemetry is a framework for collecting observability-related telemetry data. Uh, it is not an observability backend by itself. Brendan's presentation this morning should you like the state-of-the-art open source stack, right? Open telemetry is a component of that stack. Uh, it is not something that is going to do anything like that helps you solve problems immediately out of the box, right? Um, with open telemetry, you ship a single collector binary. So you have one agent or gateway, it's complicated, talk to me later if you wanna know about that, um, that you install on your machines. Uh, you don't have to install separate ones for metrics or logs or traces. You don't have to install separate ones for if you wanna use multiple products, observability systems, wire formats, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, open telemetry also ships vendor agnostic instrumentation per language. So all of the languages that you, well, <laughs> in this room, uh, most of the languages you have heard of are probably instrumented, um, including some that are pretty trendy or new. Um, it's a completely open project. It is, you know, bizarre style, like we accept PRs, like you can submit support for anything. Um, so we have state-of-the-art stuff like Rust support is in there. It's in ultra bleeding edge alpha, much like Rust itself. Um, but, you know, we do have support for it. We also have open standard semantic conventions, uh, which is something that the open telemetry engineers asked me to say. Um, that's basically a way that you name your data when you send it in so that across different uh, tools and across different platforms, you can know, hey, this metric indicates you know, network bandwidth or something like that. Um, there is also an open standard wire format, OTLP is the open telemetry protocol. Uh, it's currently modified, uh, modified GRPC. There's also an HTTP version, there's a bunch of other ones, um, but there's a way to get data into your system in a totally vendor agnostic and neutral way. We also have an E, I was gonna put parentheses, put it in a time after this morning's talk. Um, there's an eBPF network agent uh, that can auto instrument, instru bleh, that can auto instrument network infrastructure things uh, like latency talking to other hosts. Um, you can sort of do things like measuring latency down a rack or something like that uh, with the eBPF agent. So open telemetry is a system of pipelines at its heart. So a pipeline is a way to get data from one place to the other place. Uh, and you have receivers, processors, and exporters. These names are pretty self-explanatory, but I will talk a little bit about them anyway. Uh, receivers take data from some platform or application, uh, and they accept the data. So there's a bunch of different formats for ways that things emit metrics uh, that go into the open telemetry pipeline. Then they go through a processor that can mangle them or do other things to them. So uh, for example, you can redact uh, things if you are emitting sensitive stuff in your metrics, which please don't, but if you do, uh, you can use a processor to fix that. You can also use processors to do things like sample, um, which is another thing you shouldn't do. But if you want to do that, you can do that with processors. Um, there's all sorts of manipulation you can do to your metrics, traces, and logs through processors. Uh, and then exporters let you export data to an observability platform. Uh, you can run arbitrary numbers of all of these things. Uh, obviously, there may be some memory, network bandwidth, other considerations about like there's no limit in the open telemetry universe. Uh, so you can have 15 receivers, 30 processors, and 40 exporters if you really wanted to. Um, that'd be a really scary infrastructure if you had that, but you could do that. Um, on this slide, there's a QR code for something called Pipestorm. 
Uh, PipeStorm is a game that we wrote to try to help explain open telemetry pipelines, like what do you do to build an open telemetry pipeline, what are the components. Um, if you would like to check it out, you can scan that QR code, or you can go to pipestorm, all one word, dot splunk dot com. Um, and that'll be, I'll send, you know, the slides will be available afterwards as well. So now that you know a little bit about what observability is, what open telemetry is, uh, why should you use it, and specifically why is SREs, do you really care about this? Um, the biggest reason we really say is data ownership. Right? Um, data and data about your platform, data about your applications is critical, um, and you really need to be the, t the people that retain ownership of that. Um, there's also a lot of regulatory compliance, other sort of requirements. Um, if you were in this room for the last session, uh, right, the speakers from PayPal talked about just what there were like 15 regulators and that wasn't even close to all of them, right? Um, so having ownership of your data and control over where it's generated, how it's processed, uh, and what happens to it is really important. Uh, there's also business flexibility requirements and continuity requirements. Um, you as a business owner uh, should probably not have all your eggs in one basket, for example. Right? You don't have your entire cloud infrastructure in AWS. At least I, I hope not. Or if you do, you don't have it all in one availability zone, at least. Um, but like the ability to move things from one platform to the other or to send things to multiple platforms at the same time is really important as well. Um, data transferability, again, this is sort of... If you use the right semantic conventions, you can change platforms, you can change tools whenever you feel like you're not locked in anywhere. Uh, and then finally, skill set transferability, right? For all of us, um, if you learn open telemetry, it's going to be the future in observability. Um, it's beaten out pretty much everybody else. There's one vendor who I won't name that doesn't really adopt open telemetry, but everybody else is pretty much on board. Uh, and so if you learn it, you sort of learn how to get that data from one system to the other uh, in a way that's scalable, in a way that works, and in a way that helps minimize the amount of toil that you spend uh, getting observability going. OpenTelemetry is the second busiest cloud-native computing foundation project. Uh, we have 52 GitHub events per hour on average. It's behind this little hobby project called Kubernetes, but you know, one day, one day we'll overtake them. <laughs> um, Open Elementary has about 800 unique contributors per month, representing 150 organizations, thousands of contributions a week, and a bunch of other numbers. Also, um, on the slides, this is a link to the CNCF DevStats portal, where somebody has really geeked out about this, and you can get any sort of slice and dice about who's contributed to the project. Um, there is sort of a uh, this theory that like open telemetry is a Splunk project because we employ one of the co-founders and a lot of the con contributions come from Splunk. Um, we think it's important, like it's the native data format for our products, but it is definitely not a Splunk project. And if you don't believe me, go look at some PRs and you'll learn really quickly that we are not in control of this project. Um, it is a community project. There's a governance board. You can apply, you can send in PRs. Um, it's a really busy, truly open project. So why do we care about open telemetry? Uh, well, if you've been noticing on all these transition slides that I've been blowing through really fast because we're late, um, there's a haiku on all of them. Uh, technically not a haiku, I guess, because it doesn't talk about the seasons, but uh, you know, the idea here of using open telemetry is to reduce toil, right? You want to spend less time doing things that suck. Um, and so one of the things that you need to know is that instrumentation is always going to require work. Again, Brendan's keynote this morning was like, hey, you can use U-probes. And I was already writing that blog post he said we're going to publish about how that sucks and you shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, it's not ready yet uh, on Linux, uh, which is where the most common use case for it would be. Um, so for now, at least, uh, instrumentation is always going to require work. And no matter when there is an auto-instrumentation platform, it can't know critical business indicators for you. Like it can't know when you start this transaction in this service, that's a user about to check out, right? That, that's something that no auto instrumentation tool until we have generalized AI um, is never gonna be able to figure out. So you're going to have to tell your platform, hey, this is an important customer thing to pay attention to. Uh, this work is toil. Like I can't stand up here and say, it's so much fun to go instrument applications and you should all be really, really excited about it. Like it's toil, it's not interesting. Um, but you need to do it. So why not just do it once? If you use open telemetry, you do it one time, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, as we've seen historically, like open standards always end up winning in the end. Uh, open telemetry is by far the busiest um, non-Kubernetes <laughs> CNCF project. Um, and it's something that is used across vendors and open source, like every open source observability platform accepts open telemetry almost 
every vendor uh, accepts open telemetry? Well, they all accept it. Some of them are more excited about you sending it in open telemetry than others, right? Um, but really, the most important thing is that open telemetry is still growing. Um, there are lots of languages we don't have support for, or we don't have full, uh, full auto instrumentation for, um, or that are still in early you know, pre-alpha stages uh, that could use help. So you have a lot of opportunity as an SRE to contribute, to build your skill set, contribute to an important open source project that at the end of the day will make your life easier. So that would be the pitch for as an SRE, why do you care? Uh, is it can make your life easier. It's fun to help contribute and to learn things. Um, and instrumentation is work. You want to try to do as little work as you can, right? That's, that's why we're all at a conference today instead of working. Um, so what should you do next? What are things you should care about next? Um, yeah, this is my, my favorite haiku ever, by the way. Um, if you've troubleshot anything ever, I mean, everybody has at some point said, right, it's not DNS. There's no way it's DNS. And then four hours later and 50 people on a bridge, it was DNS. Uh, so there's a couple of things I'd like for you to check out. One of them is this children's book. And I realize the crop on that image makes the robot look really scary. I promise he's not. Um, it's called A Mirror and the Magical Lens, which is a book about open telemetry. It's a short book. It's like 15 pages. But um, we explain in really simple terms what is open telemetry, why do you care, how do you use it. Um, and then there's an appendix that sort of goes into some details because you know, even a very precocious kid is probably not going to care too much about that. Um, there's a link to it on the slides. You can also check out splk.it slash Amir and the Magical Lens camel cased. Uh, sorry about the URL, but that's what it is. Um, it's also going to be on the slides as well. Uh, and then there are, of course, resources from the Open Telemetry project itself. Uh, OpenTelemetry.io is the website for the project. There is a project update that just got published a month ago um, that talks about sort of the future. It's like a State of the Union kind of post um, that talks about where the opportunities are for you to contribute and for you to build uh, more things on top of open telemetry. And on the right, you can see all of the currently supported languages in open telemetry. Um, again, some of these are more or less supported than others, but you see such hits up there as Erlang and JavaScript, uh, Ruby, Rust, Swift, you know, all the ones that you would expect. Um, probably the most mature are Go and Java, which if you think about where the project came from, probably makes sense. Um, and also where most of the applications that make the money are, uh, are in Java. So um, Java supported really well. If you have questions, ask in the, not this channel apparently, the SRE, the 22APAC-Day1-Track2 uh, channel. Uh, there is a thread for questions. My LinkedIn is up here. You can feel free to send me messages. You don't have to pay. I have that turned off. Um, so if you want to send me a LinkedIn message, go for it. Otherwise, uh, I would love to answer any questions in the negative five minutes I have before we go to lunch.